All right, let's start with proof number one. Um, for proof number one, um, we're trying to prove that angle ACD is congruent to angle ABD. So we're trying to prove ACD, this angle, and ABD, we're trying to prove if those two angles are congruent to each other. Okay, now, first thing that you should identify is that they're intercepting the same arc, AD. Okay, that's kind of the first thing I hope we notice at this point. Okay, they both are intercepting that same arc AD. Okay, well first, um, in any proof we write down our givens. Okay, well we're given circle O. And we're given angle ACD and angle ABD are inscribed in arc ACD. Okay, so both of those were given to us. All right, next. Okay, I first want to state that both arcs are going to be half of that AD. So I'm going to use my inscribed angle conjecture. Okay, so look back at your inscribed angle conjecture. You should have your conjecture sheet out in front of you, pause the video if it's not out in front of you. Okay, so I'm going to use the inscribed angle conjecture and I'm going to say that the measure of my first angle ACD is equal to one half the measure of arc AD. Okay, so I'm going to first say that the measure of ACD is equal to half the measure of AD, okay, because we know that's by the inscribed angle conjecture. Inscribed angle conjecture. Okay, next I have to do the same thing for the other angle. Okay, so we also know that the measure of angle ABD is equal to one half the measure of arc AD as well because of the inscribed angle conjecture. Now, based on substitution, what we learned in algebra, okay, if I were to substitute one of these for the other, okay, I can then say that angle ABD is congruent to angle ACD. And I know that because if I were to use substitution, Okay. And that is the end of our proof. Okay, so notice how this looked a little different than the proofs we've seen in the past. Okay, they're a little shorter. Okay, they're a little bit like to the point, I would say. All right, proof number two. Take a look at it. Okay, notice that we're trying to prove that angle ACB is a right angle. Okay, so we're trying to prove that ACB is a right angle. And notice that's intercepted by a semicircle. Okay, we again, just like the first one, we already knew the answer to it, right? Because that was one of our conjectures. So we're just like proving our conjectures. We're saying why those conjectures work. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is write our givens. Okay, we have a few givens in this case. We have circle O. We have diameter AB, and we have angle ACB is inscribed, I spelled inscribed wrong, in semicircle. A, C, B. And that was also given. So notice our givens took up half the proof. Okay, so these proofs aren't long. Okay, you just have to kind of know what we need to do next. All right, next, I'm going to say that the measure of this angle, A, C, B, that I have highlighted up here, has to be equal to half of the measure of arc A, D, B. So it has to equal half 
of this arc. Because that's what our conjecture says about an inscribed angle. Okay, so if I tell you that the measure of angle A, C, B is equal to one half the measure of arc A, D, B, which means, it's going to be kind of longer here, which means it has to be one half of 180 degrees, which means it has to equal 90. Okay, we know that because of the inscribed angle conjecture. Okay, we could also write in there and the definition of a semicircle. Okay, we could also write that in. I'm just kind of losing space here. Okay, then finally, since we know that the measure of ACB is equal to 90, right? ACB equals 90 degrees. Measure of angle ACB is 90. So now we can say is a right angle. Definition of what a right angle is. And that's what we are trying to prove. That that angle, ACB, was a right angle. And we're done. Number three is going to be a little bit longer, okay? but again, we have some givens. Okay, take a look at the proof before we get started. We're trying to prove that L, angle L, and angle C are supplementary. Okay, we, even though we already know that the opposite angles in an inscribed quadrilateral are supplementary, we're just trying to prove that now. Okay, so first thing we know, circle O. That was given. Okay, and we also know inscribed quadrilateral L, I, C, Y. Okay, so next I'm going to state that the measures of these two angles are going to be equal to half their arc measures, okay, because of our inscribed angles. Okay, so look back at your inscribed. Notice there's a lot of inscribed going on in these proofs. So we know that the measure of angle C is going to be one half the measure of arc Y, L, I. And we also know that the measure of angle L is going to be half of the measure of Y, C, I arc. Okay, we know that because of our inscribed angle conjecture. Okay, that's what we know to be true. Now we know also that if we were to add up the two arcs that we have listed up here, if we were to add YLI and YCI, those would add up to a full circle. Okay, so we know that YLI plus YCI is going to be add up to a full circle, 360 degrees, okay, because of the definition of a circle, okay, because we know if we add those two together, they'd form a full circle O. Okay, then we know half of those two arcs. Y, L, I, and Y, C, I is going to equal 180 degrees. Okay, and we can say that because of the inscribed angle conjecture, or actually we can say that half of that, um, let's just say because of, um, subtra not subtraction, multiplication because we multiplied by a half. Okay, so half of it is 180. I'm going to kind of add a line here, but um, you'll kind of see at the end. The measure of angle C plus 
the measure of angle L is then going to equal 180 degrees. And we can say that because of substitution. And then finally, we can say angle C and angle L are supplementary. Supplementary, long word, because of definition of supplementary. Sorry, I ran out of room. Okay, so that's the end of proof three. A little longer, a little more complicated because you had to do a little algebra within there with the multiplication and the substitution.